Welcome back to the No Space. This is M. I'm going to show you how to complete a OneNote project. All right, everybody. It's 2021. It's time to learn some new skills. Be useful for tomorrow. What are we going to be doing here? Well, we're going to be learning how to use the OneNote class notebook. And we're basically going to do a little survey all about you, your newest interests, a little bit about yourself. Going to show you how to use some drawing tools, how to post images in the OneNote class notebook, how to put video links into your OneNote class notebook, and uh, how to submit links from the OneNote class notebook. Let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Schoology. Get in your course should be stuff in here. Right now there's not. You go down here to where it says OneNote Class Notebook. You can click on that. Over here on the left margin. You should see it underneath the Viking logo there. Click on OneNote Class Notebook. Go to sign into OneNote. Sign in with your credentials. You should see the name of the course here. Scroll down and you can open the class notebook after you've uh, signed into it. It should open up a link which looks something like this. All right. Once you get here, you can go to where it says content library. Inside the content library, you should see something that says content. Inside here is going to be anything that you need to be able to turn in anything that I ask you to do in the course, you can go in here, click on the All About Me assignment, which is the first one that's up here. From there, you want to copy this. So the first thing that we want to do is open up OneNote. After you open up OneNote and get to our uh, class notebook, which is right here, this is where I can post things and you can find the things that I post. You should be able to take these things and copy them to your own notebook. So right now, the content library is like a filing cabinet that contains everything that is useful in the course. However, you need to essentially photocopy the things out of my filing cabinet in the classroom. And to do that, you simply go to where the page is right here on the left. This right here are all the sections of the class right here would be the pages inside of these sections. So if you think about them as like Trapper Keeper, these are like the little side tabs here that are labeled. But everything that's inside of those is going to be the pages, which are right here. You can see there's Add Section and Add Page down here on the bottom. So you're going to want to click on where it says All About Me. Right click on it and then go to Copy. You want to copy this page out of the content library. And you should see down below here, you should see something that says your student number and uh, your name. So you're going to want to click in there, and you should see some folders in there. You can create your own sections inside of there if you'd like. But that's going to be your own personal notebook. So you want to go into that section. I'm going to use this teacher only section as an example here. You'd want to use the one that says your name zoom in here so you can see it more clearly. All right, so if you go here, underneath where your name is, you should be able to add a section. So you can click down here on add a section, or you can use the project or resources sections that have already been created in there. But you can add your own section if you want to. Where it says enter section name, I'm just going to put projects call them whatever you want. You can organize your your folders however you like. Now in the projects folder here, I'm simply going to add that page. So over here, right next to where it says projects here, there's a section where I can add pages. I can right click in this area and now I can paste the page that I copied earlier. There we go. So now I have my own copy of the All About Me project. And you're going to want to do this uh, to pretty much any one of the, the, the new pieces of content that we have throughout the course. 
So if you click on this little note uh, bookshelf over here, that'll show you how your notebook is laid out. But you can click on it again to make it disappear so you can see the page that you're working on in a bigger way. You can also make this full screen. If you're on a Windows machine, you press F11, and then it makes it full screen for you. It's another thing you can do. So now that I've imported the All About Me thing into my projects folder, or whatever folder you want, you can begin to fill it out. If you attempt to, to edit the content straight out of the content library, it won't let you. That's because it's supposed to be the place where you grab empty documents that have not yet been filled out, or notes, or anything that I want you to have. You can find it inside of this content library. So I'm going to go back into projects here, go to the All About Me project here. Now I'm going to enter my information. So my name. My initials. That is the uh, three letters that make up your name. Maybe two letters, depending on if you don't have a middle name or not. Favorite musical genres. Favorite artists. Interesting historical figure. That would be somebody that you learned about maybe in school or that you read about. Inspirational person can be somebody that you know, that you're related to, that a friend of yours, somebody who inspires you. So he is my daughter. Your three passions. It could also be, if, if you don't want to think about it as your three passions, you could think about it as your hobbies. If you want to think about it that way, you can enter that. Three passions, your three hobbies, something that you like to do outside of school. So hobbies. Your favorite games, they can be things that are either board games or card games, video games, sports, anything that, uh, that can be done that's a, a kind, of, kind of game. Favorite movies or TV shows should be self, fairly self-explanatory. Your main technology interest can be something that 
you're interested in when it comes to technology. There's a lot of different ways that you can look at technology. All right, then after you have that, that's basically how you use your text tool. Your text tool is the default tool. You can just click in here and type in whatever you'd like. Now, if you want to go in and, and add some other types of uh, details, you can do that by going up to where it says draw up here. There's a little tab that says draw. You can click on that. And from here, you'll see some additional tools that are visible up here. So you can select certain things. You can use the marquee tool to select objects. Like let's say I wanted to grab this, these bars over here or these, uh, these text boxes. I can click on them with the marquee tool and then I can drag them around. So if I wanted to move these things around, maybe I want to put this text over there or to another place, you can simply click on the top bar of each one of these boxes and you can drag them around to put them where you want. Very useful. With the marquee tool, you're also able to select multiple areas. So you can see I can drag and grab a whole bunch of different boxes, and then I can drag more than one thing at a time, which is really useful. If you're using the text tool and you're not inside of a box that is already created, you can click in an area and you can make a new text box, which then you can grab it from the top little bar up here, the, the toolbar, you can drag it wherever you want it to go. Very useful. If you want to select a whole box like this and press the delete key on the keyboard, you can delete an entire box, but you have to select it first by clicking on the top of the toolbar of the uh, area that you select. If you go up to the uh, pencil tool here, you can choose the pencil, and then you can choose what color you'd like your pencil to be. So right here it says drawing tools. Here's a drawing of something that I enjoy. I'd like you to take the pencil tool or the, the highlighter, one of the two, probably the pencil tool, and draw something that you enjoy. I'm just going to make a crudely drawn music note here. There we go. If you make a mistake and it doesn't look so good, just press Control Z. You can go back a step. So if you don't like quite how it looks, you can change it up a little bit. You can also use different colors. So I can click on the blue here. Maybe I'll draw a little drum kit over here. I have a hi hat. Should even have a drum set. Go. Do some symbols. here, have a little guitar maybe. Spend a little time on your drawing, get used to how you can draw in here. It's, it's fun to be able to make stuff in one note with your drawing tools. Now there's not only the pencil tool up here, you can also choose whatever color you'd like. There's, there's a few other colors that you could potentially choose. You can also choose to have different sizes for your brush. So you can click on this. This is the thickness of your particular brush. So you can go in there and Add a little detail if you want. There's also a highlighting tool. You can click on the highlighter. And if you use this tool, you can actually highlight particular things. So maybe I want to highlight some text. I can draw over the text with the highlighter tool to be able to note that these are important somehow. All right, just like with the other tools, you can use the, or uh, just like with text tools, 
You can use the marquee tool to be able to select things like the drawings that I just created and I can move them around. So this is really useful for being able to move things where I want them. Also, if I use the marquee tool and I select an entire area and if I highlighted them, I can move them around and you'll see that the highlighting stays with the uh, text that I create, which is very useful for if you're taking notes and you want to mark certain things. All right, now that we've talked about those basic tools, let's talk a little bit. Oh, there's also some symbols that you could use. If you go into the, uh, let me go out of this, Control-Z. If you select a, a text area and you go into math, you can actually do mathematical properties in a, in a certain area. So if you want to use this for math, you can actually do some nice math operations in here as well. Probably not going to be done in this class. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to go back into the insert tools. And you're going to see that there are some insert tools that you could potentially use. So make sure that you don't have a big area highlighted here. Let me actually take these highlights out. There we go. So you can click into a text box, and you can see that there, if you go into the insert tab up here, you're able to add files. You could potentially add PDFs or other files. You could add tables. So if you wanted to make certain size tables, you can use that as well. You can add pictures. So if there's a, a picture that you want from a file or from a camera or from online, those are all things that you could input. You could also input a link, which is what we'll do for our video link. So let's see how these work. First thing we're going to do is check out how to do an image post. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to put a picture that's important to me. Something that is important. So I'm going to look up uh, look up images here. I want to first I want to find an image that I want to use. So to do this, you can simply go to Google. You can look for something. I'm going to look for the flying spaghetti monster. And I'm going to cl click on images after I've searched for my particular term. And you should see some different images that pop up. This is the one that I want here. So these are all thumbnail images. I'm going to click on the image that I want to save and post. So here's an image that I want to use. I'm going to right click on that image and go to copy image. You want to make sure that you don't right click on the picture that is a thumbnail because it'll be very low quality. You want to click on the image first. It'll bring up a big image over here on the right. From there, you right click on it, go to copy image, go back to OneNote, simply click in the area where you want to put that image, and then you can right click and go paste, or you can press Control V, and it will paste that image. So there it is. You can actually, with images, you can resize them. So if I wanted to make this a bigger picture or stretch it, you can do so simply by hovering your mouse over the corners or the little white boxes that are around the Im image. And you're able to make them bigger or smaller. I make that image nice and big. There we go. And what you see here is the flying spaghetti monster dealing a killer blow to the COVID virus. Thank you. Praise be to his noodly appendages. All right, now that we've learned how to import an image, this isn't the only way, by the way. If you wanted to save an image, like let me, let me show you another way you could do this. I could save this image. I'm going to right click on the image and go save as. I'm going to save it into my downloads folder. Spaghetti COVID, I'm going to rename it. Press save. Now I'm going to go back into my OneNote area here. Go to where it says insert. I'm going to go to picture. I'm going to insert it from, uh, from a file. And now I can choose a file here. 
From there, I can find that file that I just downloaded. Let me go to my downloads folder. Click on Spaghetti COVID. Press insert. And that is a way where you can also put in an image that is on your computer instead of something that you copy and paste from the internet. Most of the time, you'll probably be copying and pasting. But I just wanted to show you how you could do it manually as well from a file on your computer. You can also insert a picture from your camera. If you want to do that, go to insert picture and then from camera. You can take a picture and then put that in here as well. If you want to take a picture of your dog or your cat or something. All right, video link. How can you put a, a picture or a video in here? Well, first you just want to go to a place that has video. So I'm going to go to YouTube. Search for a video here. I'll do um, go. Pick a different one here. No, we're So I can take a, a video, just find a video. 2020 that's the link it. There. So from here, you can take the video URL that's up here. Right click, go to copy. Make sure you select the whole thing. You can go back into where OneNote is and then press Control V. Or you can go and right click and go to paste. Uh, looks like you can't do right click and paste. You're going to have to press control V. You tap that in, you press enter. Once you press enter, the video should show up. So whoever's looking at the OneNote class notebook should just be able to click on this, this play button. And you should be able to play it. Very nice. A helpful tip. Also, if you wanted to play a video from a certain timestamp that is not playing the video from the very beginning, but maybe you wanted to play a video towards the end, you can click down here on the YouTube video wherever you want the, the time to be, and you want to right click on the time bar itself down here, right click over here, and then go to where it says copy URL at current time. If you do copy URL at current time, then the URL that it gives you, that it copies to your, your clipboard, will be starting the video from this point in time instead of starting it from the beginning of the video. So now if I put that link into this area here and press enter, I can press play and it'll play from that point in time. So now we know how to put in video, we know how to put in images, we know how to draw, we know how to put in text. Now how do I turn this in? Well what you want to do is you want to right click on where it says the, the name of the page that you want to turn in. Right here in the page area. Remember these are the sections of your OneNote class notebook and these are the pages. You want to right click on the page and then don't go to copy you want to go down to where it says copy link to this page. So you're, you're going to link to me. You're going to send me a link to this page so I can see it. So click on copy link to this page. And then you're going to go into Schoology to where our project is for this week. And it'll look something like this. Go to the project that you're going to turn it into. Click up where it says uh, Submit Assignment. Then click on the Create tab. And then you're going to paste that link into the Create tab area. And you're going to click on what looks like a little link. 
in the create tab area and then you're going to paste that link and it should be blue underlined blue and you should be able to click on it and be able to get into uh, the page that you've created I hope that this was enjoyable I hope it's not too tough we've got a lot of learning to do you're going to be using the OneNote class notebook quite a bit so I hope you get familiar with it. This is also very useful for the rest of your assignments, for the rest of your classes. So get good with this because it'll make your life easier. Until next time, keep on learning.